Installing a front disc brake kit is a relatively simple installation with great improvement over the stock drum brakes. The drum brakes on your VW are very capable of stopping your car within a safe tolerance if your car is stock and you keep them regularly adjusted. If however you add more horsepower, larger wheels and tires, one panic stop in heavy traffic may cause you to lose more than your lunch. Front disc brake kits offer an easy and safe solution. Stopping power that doesn't fade with repeated heavy braking, disc brakes are fully exposed to outside air, working to constantly cool the road. More consistent straight line stopping power, calipers are self-adjusting, brake shoe adjustment is no longer needed. Disc brakes perform better in wet weather because centrifugal force tends to fling water off the brake disc and keep it dry, whereas drum brakes will collect water on the inside surface where the brake shoes contact the drum. Disc pads are an easy replacement. Between 60 and 90 percent of your vehicle's stopping power comes from the front wheels, making it clear that drum brakes are quite capable for most rear brake duty, and drums work better than discs as emergency brakes. If you want to carry the upgrades that disc brakes offer to all four wheels, Empey offers rear disc brake kits as well. We offer kits in different configuration. The Econo kits have stamped steel caliper brackets, while the more preferable deluxe kits feature cast steel brackets. If you are installing four-wheel disc brakes, then a master cylinder designed for four-wheel discs must be used. Not using the correct master cylinder is a source of installation failure. Empey offers a 20.6 millimeter board dual circuit master cylinder that will supply the correct pressure and bias. It is available in both standard and Super Beetle configurations. These dual master cylinders were designed for use with four-wheel disc brakes, so they are ready to bleed and bolt on. Empey offers a number of different kits, drop and standard height spindle, with e-brake and without, and a number of different wheel fitments. Your Empey dealer can show you the options and help you choose the right kit for your application. With so many different kits available, this video will not detail the installation of each kit. Instead, we will review some of the basics and most common installation questions that we receive, along with some tips to help prevent installation frustration. Let me begin by stating the obvious. Your brake system plays an extremely important role in your safety and the safety of those around you. So if you are not a competent mechanic, or experience difficulty with the installation of any brake component, I recommend that you seek professional help. A mechanic, that is. Although if you allow yourself to get frustrated installing, adjusting, or bleeding your brake system, you may require some other professional help. When dealing with components that you will rely on for your safety, mechanical ability, patience, and allotting appropriate time for the install is of utmost importance. Have your service manual and instructions close by and follow them diligently and you should have no problem. And if you do, call the MP dealer from where you purchased the kit and ask for their help. Open the box and separate all of the components. Read the instructions thoroughly, then go back and check that all the components are there and gather anything else that may be required before you begin your installation. You will be installing new wheel bearings and seals, so you will need a fresh can of grease. Natural or synthetic is your choice, but one that is made for disc brakes. Your kit may have come with new brake lines. If not, now is the time to change them. Same with your spindle nuts. Check them over for damage or cracks and replace them if necessary. We discuss master cylinders in detail later in the video. Make your choice and have all the required components ready before you begin your install. With the wheel, tire, and brakes removed, take the time to clean everything in the wheelhouse. Check your pan, steering box and coupler, tie rods, fuel line fitting and line, take a good look around and check and clean everything, and lubricate components while they are within easy reach. Save yourself the frustration of not being able to get a pedal once your kit is installed because your rear brakes are out of adjustment. 
This is one of the two biggest reasons for difficulty in getting a high, firm brake pedal at the completion of the installation. Read your service manual and adjust them. Then check and adjust them again. Don't forget to back off your e-brake cables before you adjust, then readjust them to spec. The first thing that you will need to do is to install the bearing races in the new rotors. Service manuals explain that this requires a hydraulic press, and that is our recommendation as well. The cost of a pro installing them with a press is much less than having to replace even one of the rotors. But if you want to install them yourself, bearing and seal installation tools are available for as little as $30. Be certain that the race is started straight in the hub, place the appropriate size tool on the race, and tap the race in. Be sure to check after each couple of blows to make sure it is going in straight. If it is not straight in the hub, stop. Do not continue to hammer it in, rather remove it and start again. Or better yet, take it to a pro for a press installation. For most motorheads, this was a rite of passage, when their dad or mom let them finally get their hands in the grease and pack the bearings. If you plan to cook, hug your girl, or pet your dog in the next few days, it will probably be best to use some latex gloves. Dig into the can of disc brake wheel bearing grease that you've chosen and place a glump of grease into the palm of your hand. Now take the bearing in your other hand, and with it angled downward, press the bearing into the grease hard enough to dig into the palm of your hand, then scoop the grease, forcefully pushing it into the bearing. Turn the bearing about 10 degrees at a time, and repeat. You will see after your first pass all the way around the bearing that the grease is beginning to come through in some places. Continue to pack the grease by pushing and scooping the bearing into your palm and the grease until the grease is coming through the bearing all the way around. Wipe off the excess grease and set it down, then pack the other three bearings. Follow the directions and install your kit. Try to keep your hands clean. Keep dirt and especially grease away from the pads and rotor. Before you place the caliper with pads over the rotor, clean the rotor face both front and back with lacquer thinner or acetone. Take a look at how the caliper centers on the rotor. Most times the caliper is closely centered but occasionally, due to machining tolerances in the rotor, bracket, and or caliper, it may not be. For those occasions, MP provides some spacer washers in the kit. You will find two sets of four spacer washers. One set is a bit thinner than the other. You can place the spacers between the caliper and the mounting bracket to gain space to center the caliper. You can use the thin set, the thick set, or both. Just be certain to use the same for both bolts of the caliper. One caliper can have spacers, while the other caliper does not. You are using them only to center each caliper onto its rotor.
Bleeding the brakes has ended many friendships and rattled many homes. So do yourself and those around you a solid and purchase a one-person brake bleeding tool. This one is the one I use, MightyVac. It sells for about $30, but there are others both more and less expensive, but worth every dollar when compared to hearing, Dude, how much longer do I have to hold this? Or, Didn't you say push? I thought you said push. Trust me and buy the Mighty Back. MP also offers Quick Bleeders, a patented one person brake bleeder that has a unique check ball design which allows old fluid and air to be pushed out but closes between pumps, preventing the old fluid and air from re entering the system. They are available in three sizes. Check into it before you begin to bleed your brakes. The modern brake caliper is a relatively simple design but depending on the choice of position for the bleeder and its relationship to the brake line, bleeding can require patience and repetition to get the trapped air out of the system. Honestly, 75% of the calls that we receive concerning brake problems result in eventually finding that there was air in the lines. For front disc and rear drum, either the larger single master cylinder, like for a Type 2, or a dual master cylinder, like a 67 and later Type 1, will do the job. We offer kits both ways. The single master cylinder is popular because it is less expensive and you don't have the additional expense of a dual reservoir and modifying your brake lines. The dual master cylinder, on the other hand, offers the safety of having two brake circuits. Should you cut a line on your front brakes, your rear brakes will still work and vice versa. My opinion? You're upgrading the disc brakes. Don't short suit yourself. Go with the added safety of a dual master cylinder. If you choose a single master cylinder, be certain that it was made for a disc brake conversion. Single master cylinders are made for drum brakes and are designed with a built-in residual valve required for a drum brake system. It will, however, prevent you from getting a firm pedal with your disc brake conversion. Before you bench bleed the cylinder, it doesn't hurt to check. Remove the boot, then the C-clip. Then remove the piston, seals, and springs. Be certain to note their order. You will need to reinstall them the exact same way. If there is a residual valve, it will be at the end of the spring. Remove it, reinstall the components, and begin the bench bleeding procedure. Whichever master cylinder you choose, if you are installing a new one, it must first be bench bled. You need to get all the air out of the cylinder. You can do it in the car, but it takes forever to get all the air out. The master cylinder will need to be held firmly to bleed. A bench mounted vise is the best tool for the job. Be sure to mount it level so that the air will leave and the fluid will refill properly during bleeding. Have a catch can ready so that the brake fluid that you will be forcing out of the master cylinder will go into the can and not shoot out onto the floor. Use new clean DOT3 brake fluid and remember brake fluid will remove paint. With the reservoir installed and filled, using an old push rod, push the cylinder in the same way your brake pedal pushes in when stopping. Then cover the holes tightly with your fingers and let the cylinder come back out. You will get fluid and air from the fitting holes and air bubbles floating to the top of the reservoir. Keep pumping until there are no more bubbles in the reservoir. Install the reservoir cap and your master cylinder is ready for installation.
Residual valves are used to maintain constant line pressure to help eliminate excessive pedal travel and create a much firmer and responsive pedal feel. A two or four pound valve is recommended for disc brake applications, while a 10 pound valve is used on drum brake applications. I recommend using them, but don't just take my word for it. Do some research and make your decision. With your master cylinder and all brake components installed, and all lines sealed and tight with no chance for leaks, it's time to check the master cylinder pushrod free play. Brake pedal free play is the amount of pedal movement before the pushrod touches the piston inside the master cylinder, before the piston starts to move. Five to seven millimeter of free play at the top of the brake pedal translates to about one millimeter of play between the end of the pushrod and the piston in the master cylinder. This distance is critical to assure that after braking, the piston returns far enough to allow the pressure built up during braking to return to the reservoir. Don't confuse this with take-up distance, the distance the pedal travels before braking action actually occurs. Excessive take-up distance can be eliminated by bleeding air out of the lines and adjusting the drum brakes at the rear wheels. If you have four-wheel discs, the calipers will self-adjust you just need to bleed all the air out of the system. Before you begin to bleed the system, check that everything is ready for this final procedure. Fill the master cylinder reservoir with new, clean DOT3 brake fluid. Pump the brake pedal a few times to build up pressure in the system. Check the master cylinder connections and brake switches for leaks and the brake cylinder and her calipers along with all brake line connections. Begin bleeding air from the system, starting with the passenger rear wheel, then the driver rear, passenger front, and lastly driver front. You must bleed them in this order to eliminate any trapped air in the system. Make certain that each time you bleed a cylinder or caliper, that you refill the master cylinder reservoir with new clean DOT3 brake fluid. Never reuse brake fluid that has been bled from the system, and never allow the master cylinder reservoir to run out of fluid. If you do, it will suck air in and you'll be starting from scratch. Unlike the simple drum brake cylinder, the disc brake caliper design can allow for air to be trapped. So to help all the air be evacuated, I suggest that you unbolt your caliper and rotate it up to about the 11 or 12 o'clock position. If your brake line is long enough, just keep it centered on the rotor. If not, you will need a block of wood the approximate thickness of a rotor to be put between the pads. Never apply fluid pressure to a caliper without limiting the pad movement or you blow the piston out of the caliper. Bleed all four corners, then check to see that you have a firm pedal and that the pedal actuates the brakes at the top of its motion, less the pushrod free play, and does not have significant take-up difference. If the pedal goes down part way before brakes function, or if you have to pump the pedal to get it to the top of its motion and firm, then go back and repeat the bleeding procedure, you still have air in the lines. Be prepared to repeat the bleeding procedure probably a few times to get all the air out. If you've completed bleeding the system and have a high firm pedal, then you're ready to test your new brakes. Make certain that your emergency brake is adjusted and functional then manually rock the car back and forth just a foot at a time and apply the brakes. Once you are confident that your brakes are functioning, start your car and carefully and slowly drive into a clear or empty street with your hand on the e-brake just in case and check to be certain you have braking power. Drive about 25 miles per hour with your foot lightly on the brake pedal. This will help seat the shoes to the drums and the pads to the rotors. Don't do any panic stops until you have a few miles on the new system to mate the pads and shoes. Then go ahead and roll up to about 25 mile per hour and carefully execute a panic stop. The first thing that you will notice is how straight the disc brakes will stop you and you never have to adjust them again. If you have kept your drum brakes in the rear, they of course will require adjustment with every oil change or maybe even more often to keep that high and tight pedal. If after attempting the installation you are still having difficulties or are not confident in your brake system, do not operate your vehicle. Stop and contact a professional or call your MP dealer and ask for help.